Hey y'all, it's July the 15th, 2017, y'all, I was doing a little bit of research, I got a little bit carried away to be honest with you, and time got away from me, but I was doing a little bit of research on certain things regarding the Catholic Church, right, I was looking into it, all sort of different things to look into, one thing I was looking into was somebody that we mentioned um, earlier, and that would be a father, Philip Pizzo, right, he's from the St. Joseph Benedict, um, Labre, uh, Joseph, Sir Joseph, St. Joseph Benedict Labre Church over there in Richmond Hill. Alright, um, thing is, I wanted to find out more about the situation, and the fact is that that particular father, Philip Piso, had a Twitter, and his Twitter caught mad controversy. All sort of people were absolutely outraged by it. There it goes right there. You might think of it as a joke. Some people do not take it as that. And so, yeah. Philip Pizzo caught a terrible backlash. Thing is, if you go and do some research on it, you know, you might find the St. Benedict, uh, St. Joseph Benedict, um, library, St. Joseph Benedict Library Church in Richmond Hill. You'll find their Facebook, right? Uh, and, and you'll see that Philip Pizzo, he, he is still head of the congregation, obviously there and stuff, you know, and nothing real bad has happened to him. However, he, he definitely is not allowed anywhere near Twitter or anything like that. And that's something I want to point out. That's just an example because Philip Pizzo, he has something slightly positive to say about Donald Trump and that's just not acceptable to some people out there. And so, you know, you know, they expressed all sort of outrage and they continue to do it on places such as the St. Benedict, Joseph, uh, Labre, the Facebook. They, they still do it. They, they're very outraged by it and stuff. They want to know how he gets away with it. Thing is, I don't know, I don't know how Philip Pizzo gets away with it. But he does have to shut his dang mouth, right? I understand he's not allowed to have a Twitter. Some people in the Catholic Church are allowed to have a Twitter. And it's very much encouraged. And some people are not. Philip Pizzo is one of those people. He needs to shut his mouth. The reason I bring that up is, of course, you're going to have the great, the great majority of Catholic priests not mention the scandal. That we all know is taking place over there in the Vatican and in Australia and all sorts of other places. Uh, they're not allowed to, they don't, they're not allowed to have opinions, dude, publicly, unless their opinion absolutely aligns with that of the Pope, um, <clears throat> who's a very questionable character indeed, all right? So that's what you come to find out about, uh, Father Philip Pizzo, it's not much happened to him, all right? And then, you know, I found certain videos, uh, he's not very well on the internet a lot, but you can find certain videos, and I left the link below to one of them, it's actually a long one, where this guy was interviewing Philip Pizzo. A while back about his church and the guy interviewing is terrible at interviews and stuff so it's really quite boring but the thing is I sat through and I was listening to it and stuff and you see Father Pizzo and he's describing all sorts of things about the church to include who the church was named after all right so this is where the story takes a shift all right you guys want to throw in a curveball here Tupac Shakur <laughs> Uh, you know, I used, to, I used to listen, I still do listen to him, the thing is he died a long time ago. Alright, I want to bring in Tupac Shakur, and although that might seem random, I want to mention just real briefly, Tupac Shakur was born to a single mother, and she did crack, and she was in jail all sort of, all sort of times for different reasons. Alright, so Tupac, he grew up in all sort of confusion, and he was starting to get his way about him. He was really starting to come to Jesus, if that's what you want to call it, and, uh, you know, getting to know God real well right before he got murdered, alright? And so there's all sort of, people wonder, I'm sure they have theories about why he was murdered and stuff like that. But what I want to bring up is a sentiment that Tupac shared before he got murdered that a lot of people bring up. Right? They think it's valid, but it's not, and I'm going to explain why. Tupac, he, and, it, and this went viral, like, all, a lot of people have heard this before and stuff. Millions of people heard Tupac say, you know, it's kind of outrageous. He, he believes in God wholeheartedly, but at the same time, he had very, uh, very, uh, suspicious type concerns. Now, the fact is that the Bible wasn't continued. He said, you know, at this point, uh, the Bible is like, dude, it's kind of old. Why, why wouldn't there be an updated version of the Bible, all right? That was what Tupac was questioning out loud. And the thing is, a lot of people... They believe the same thing, they, or at least they question it. They have a question, why isn't the Bible continued? Right? What I have to explain real briefly, the whole reason why I brought it up is because the Bible is continued. It is a story that just goes on. You don't have to recognize that fact, but the fact is that the Bible is continued. Right? And that's regardless of the Catholic Church or not. It doesn't really matter. The thing is, um, there's been, just to let you know, hundreds of saints. Hundreds! Right? 
uh, uh, you know, a lot, dozens of scores, and just over the years, since uh, ever since Jesus, there's been many, many saints, all right? In fact, you know, uh, the reason I got to thinking about this is the patron saint that uh, Saint Joseph Benedict uh, Labrie, that whole church is named after a saint. It's an actual person living in the 1700s, right? The story does continue, right? But you have to look into it, basically. And it's really easy to do on the internet. You find a whole list of all the different saints and what their stories were. All right, Saint Joseph uh, Benedict Labrie. The thing about him is. Um, he fits kind of the typical mold of a saint once you start looking into certain saints, all right? Joseph uh, Benedict Labrador, here's the thing about him. He, he lived a very, what you would call, impoverished life, all right? I want y'all to focus on that. I mean, he, he's very typical as far as saints go in the regard that he, he died young and in poverty, all right? Basically, just some of the stories, a lot of different stories that can be told about St. Joseph Benedict Labrador. But the thing is, just to sum it up, all right, he died at the age of what 35 pretty young of malnutrition all right he was basically a homeless person went wandering around i mean he worked i mean he basically he went and visited all sort of um sacred sites and stuff of previous saints and stuff and he made his life out of that what he did is he traveled on foot all across europe and stuff to different places and he did so while begging for change as a homeless person uh would do he, he was what a lot of people would regard as mentally ill, all right? He was known for being that, all right? Very malnourished little guy and stuff. Very poor guy, all right? He had to beg for some change so that he could, by foot, walk all across Europe and find these sacred sites and visit them, right? And like I said, you know, his, his situation didn't really get better. I mean, his health never really got better. However, he did have a hand in curing all sort of other people. And there's many stories about it. All right. Uh, he he had he had a hand in multiplying bread for people who wanted it. Meanwhile, he went malnourished in the place where he lived. At reason is because there was not enough food to go around. All right. So Joseph Benedict Library, what he would do is he would share whatever food that he got, and it was not much with whoever it was that was around. All right. This is a mentally ill person. He was referred to as a saint of forty hours because he, what he did one time is he basically went up to a shrine and he worshipped uh, Jesus Christ for forty hours straight. All right. You might just go ahead and infer that he might have been autistic. Uh, you know, it's debatable. And the thing is, a lot of people would consider him mentally ill. He's a homeless person. All right. This is one of the many many saints, and it is quite the typical story and in that you know none of these uh, saints have anything to do with the type of lifestyle that these catholic priests uh live and stuff w you know in all sort of fancy robes and things like that having people give them all sort of money so that they can take airplanes and everything else nice cruise ships to wherever they're going these catholic priests and stuff private jets and things like that all right um saint benedict joseph labre he walked all across europe his clothes were known for being dirty and muddy and he just didn't have different sets of clothes you know what he did he, he when he went to sleep he went to sleep in the corner of a room he took whatever it is that anybody could give him and that's how he lived his life all right in a very what you would call mentally ill type of fashion you understand that the bible does continue <clears throat> and the characters that you would be speaking of most of the time would be considered mentally ill all right and you know a lot of people look at you know the stories of the saints and think oh that's fantastical oh these are wondrous events oh these people oh they didn't have no sense because they died early and they died in pain and stuff and they saw all their loved ones die of all sort of epidemics and stuff like that and meanwhile they just helped the poor and they didn't have no kind of money and stuff they didn't have no kind of twitter or social media or anything like that uh these people out here and most people consider them mentally ill people and that's how the bible continues meanwhile the, the, the catholic church uh, for all their fancy uh, spotless robes for all their big fancy hats and stuff and their, and their tinted glass windows and stuff like that for all their for all their jet planes and, and their cruise ships and stuff like that they don't have not one thing to do not one not the first thing to do with saints who are a continuation of the bible whether or not you want to believe in them and believe it or not a lot of people are named after saints that's where a lot of people get their names from uh and we're mostly living the tribulation you guys i'll holler at y'all later and stuff man i got some stuff to do so i'll holler at y'all <laughs>